Hi, this is CC Kim for Movies About Music. And this is Jim. Welcome. We are doing our Oscar special episode. Oh, yes. We're going to get to a lot of the Oscar nominated films、mm-hmm. later, but I was looking at the films and I noticed that there's this movie called Coda. And I looked into it and I watched the trailer. I watched half the trailer. I only watch half trailers these days because they give away too much information. Right. But I saw, oh, this is a movie about music. So. We're going to talk about this movie, Coda. Yes. And then in the second half, we're going to talk about some of the Oscar nominated films. But we'll get to that later. All right, then. So, Coda, in one sentence, like a little plot summary before we get into this, is about a girl who is the only hearing member of her entirely deaf family. There's like her parents and a brother. And they go out fishing, like somewhere in Massachusetts. I don't know if it's Cape Cod, but somewhere near Boston. They're a, a fishing family. family. Yeah, they're a fishing yeah, family. That's what they do for a living.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, she has been sort of interpreting for her entire family her entire life because she's the only hearing member of her family. And she discovers that she loves singing. And she is very talented. She's immensely talented. She goes to pursue it. She signs up for a chorus class、yeah. in high school. And then the teacher obviously sees that she's immensely gifted and urges her to audition for the Berklee College of Music. Nearby. Right. And,、uh, but in order for her to do this, she needs to sort of like leave her family behind. And so that's the dilemma. That's the main、right. conflict because、yeah. they also really need her. They don't just like marginally kind of need her, but they really need her because like they need a, a hearing person on the boat with them. This is a, a remake of a French movie that I had seen when it came out when I was in France called La Famille Bellier. And let's start with that because you didn't know that. I didn't know that until you mentioned it last, at the end of last podcast.、Mm-hmm. And then you mentioned it, but I didn't know you had seen it. I thought you had just heard about it, but you've actually seen、mm-hmm. it. I saw it when I, back when it came out. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to say it's always a great idea, at least for me.、Mm-hmm. I try to go into a movie as ignorant as I possibly can,、mm-hmm. and it always works、mm-hmm. when that happens. And so I went into this movie not knowing anything about the movie. And I mean, we're kind of burying the lead here. We're, you、mm-hmm. know, you and I are both talking very measured and all of that right now.、Mm-hmm. We were both floored by this movie. Right, right. This was a really, really good movie. This, yeah, I was very surprised because the French movie was okay, but it wasn't, there were a lot of plot holes in my opinion, and the conflict wasn't as clear as this one. Right. So it wasn't, the stakes weren't that high, and it was kind of presented almost like a, as a comedy musical. The comedic aspect was a lot stronger, and there were some cultural. Aspects of it that me being more American than French, I appreciate it. I think I'm sorry, but like the American version a lot better. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I kind of like it when they, you know, when there's these translations、mm-hmm. of like a French film or French literature or something、mm-hmm. like that into, into English, when it retains some of the soul、mm-hmm. that's there. Like, I doubt because these, you know, they were very sexually active, the parents、mm-hmm. yeah, in this yeah, movie. Yeah. I don't think that would have been in there if it was just a straight up American story. That's exactly what I was getting yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I like that, you know,、yeah. you could feel some of the,、yeah. what I think were some of the French elements. A thought that I had so this teacher hears her sing, and the first time she's supposed to sing in class, she runs out of the room. And it's, you know, I love when movies do this without explaining things. We're building her character up, right?、Uh-huh. And we soon come to learn that she's been teased all her life, you know, because of. Her family, and she's kind of, she, she loves her family at the same time that she's embarrassed by her family because of the teasing that she gets from other students. And so she has a hard time doing anything in front of other students. And the first time she sings for the teacher, she has to do it in front of the other students, and she, run, she literally runs out of the classroom. But then he encourages her, and then she sings, and he's like, Oh, okay, you can, you can really sing. And so the relationship takes off from there. The thought that I had is you know, you and I have talked in the past about films where wouldn't it be an interesting, interesting to see this movie from another character's perspective?、Mm-hmm. So I thought of Mr. Holland's opus. In, in some ways, this is Mr. Holland's opus from the student's perspective rather than the teacher's per-、mm-hmm. perspective. You get this student teacher relationship where he's very much encouraging her and he's like, Look, if I'm going to pour myself into supporting you,、mm-hmm. you're going to have to bring it. And She's caught between that world and she's not a good student. You know, she doesn't seem to really care about 
her education. She's caught between that world and this chance because she loves to sing mm-hmm. and this other world of her family who depends on her. And apparently this idea of dependency is kind of, I was just glancing at Wikipedia. This is an issue. Some some of the viewers thought that that dependency was not a good representation of deaf or coda families. Uh-huh. Um, I don't, I, I don't want to comment on that because I don't know. Right. But in this film, right. and we're just taking it as this film, they depend on her. Mm-hmm. And they depend on her to to translate and you know to run this new business. Mm-hmm. I, the, the screenplay is fantastic. Yeah, the yeah. way it ramps up the yeah, yeah, tensions without forcing any tension. The dependency on her of the family grows as the teacher needs her mm-hmm. to focus more in order to achieve this dream of hers. So that's the conflict that she's going through. At the same time, she's interested in this boy who mm-hmm. she's known for a long time, and he saw sort of saw her as this weird person in the neighborhood with a weird family. And they become close because they have to sing this duet together. Mm. And those were some really nice moments Mm. of the movie. One of the things about movies like this, about movies about music, where now you're a singer, I'm not a singer. To me, singing is the most naked, the most vulnerable, the most terrifying for me, Mm -hmm. seemingly terrifying thing that one can do in music. And, you know, I'm watching these movies that we do about music and there's the there's the heartbeat mo you know there's the beat right before someone opens their mouth oh, yeah, and begins yeah. to sing and has to hit the note. Yeah, I know exactly what you you're know what saying. I'm saying. Yeah, because yeah. for me, for a non singer, it's like that that would be absolutely terrifying. And you see this about f- three or four times in this movie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I never really I don't think about that anymore. But you don't I know get, exactly. You don't get terrified like the 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 instant before you sing. You of course you don't because you're a master of your instrument. Well, yeah, yeah, I have enough experience to not be terrified. I mean, I couldn't do. But you my know job. what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I but I remember she reminded me of when I first started singing in front of other people. But like you know, I mean, I've been singing in front of other people for a really long time. But I remember like when I really had to sing in front of other singers or musicians. That's different. Like it's one thing to sing in front of non-musicians and it's another thing to be like mm. hey i'm one of you please let me in right <laughs> and so that's what she had to do exactly. right exactly yeah and that's terrifying that is really terrifying it doesn't matter what note mm-hmm. you're about to hit it's just overall terrifying mm-hmm. and like her mini panic attack right before she had to sing happy birthday to audition to figure out for the teacher to figure out if she was like an alto or a soprano or a mezzo that little mini panic attack <laughs> I totally get that. I, me too. That's yeah. why this is the first time yeah. I think it was really realized yeah, yeah. that strongly because yeah. there's that beat and and we're waiting for it too mm-hmm. as as movie watchers. We're like, and oh, everyone's how's she staring sound? at you. Yeah, everyone's staring at you. They have no idea what you sound like. Yeah. Nobody has any like, but they're also kind of expecting something from you. It's like a pregnant moment, right? And you're either good or you're not. Yeah. I mean, it's not. I know it's not binary. There's, there's levels, degrees of for quality. Me, but, it's but, binary. Yeah, but yeah. but if you're bad, you're. Naked. Yeah, if you got it, you got it. If yeah. you don't, you go. I think this is probably why that show I never watch is so popular, Singing with the Stars. Oh, no, American Idol. American Idol, yeah. yeah. I don't watch it either, but yeah. it's, yeah, and you only have like, let, let's say you start off shaky, right? You're right. only allowed like two bars of that. That's what I was thinking yeah. about. Like you can be shaky for like maybe two bars and after that you better fucking bring it. Like you, <laughs> there's yeah. no such thing as like, oh, people aren't going to wait around. So yeah, that was, she had a couple of those moments, right? Where she was like, a, like two bars, a little bit like shy or weak or, you know, where before Cause she Because she's finds. figuring it out. And that's yeah. what I really like. Like sometimes these movies... It's like you're gifted from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. What I thought this movie did really well, and it's a, it's a testament to her acting ability, that she was both a really good singer and unskilled. Yeah. And you could see it. Yeah. You could hear it. And I thought that this made for the dynamic between her and the teacher that mm-hmm. much more real. What did you think of kind of the exercises that the teacher was giving? Were those pretty accurate? Because yeah. he's got these... Be the be the small dog, the shallow panting dog, and the yeah. deep pan- like the big small dog and the big dog. Yeah, for breathing exercises. Um, yeah, that that could help. Yeah, that I knew about the help. breathing from the stomach. Yeah. That one, that one, I did know. Breathing yeah. from the gut. Well, later they say like you have to kind of breathe from your anus. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and yeah, that's sort of like another level of. Yeah, that's also in some 
martial arts. That's in Tai Chi. Yeah, I, 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 there's a lot of there are a lot of similarities between martial arts and singing. I think yeah. it's just you know all it's about a full the body chi. thing. Yeah, it's an energy thing. It's a full body thing. It's a flow thing. You know, it's that strength isn't even going to cut it. You gotta have you have to let go, but also like have a strong core. But you have to be able to sort of send the sound. But then you can't think about it too much. You know, it's it's it, it, there are different levels of this. And I always say, I've, I think I've said this in this podcast, like a couple of times at least, you either have it or you don't. Right. Period. There's no such thing as like, you know, oh, if I have a hundred singing lessons, I might be able to be a professional singer. No. You might get better, but no. Yeah. And she had it, obviously. Mm. It was, she was born with it. And she also... Loved it. Yeah, that was that yeah, was the thing. and you could see why she loved it. Right, you could feel it. Yeah. You could feel why she had to do this. Right. You know, there's another thing going on in this movie that's just brilliant in the screenplay. Is this idea of living in different worlds? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So she, there's this family world. Yeah. Of deafness, and she's in it, mm-hmm. and at the same time, she's outside of it. Right. Because she is a hearer. Right. As they said. So there's these two worlds going on. Mm -hmm. There's one point when the teacher says, can you explain it to me? Mm -hmm. And she said, no. I I don't know if she said no, but she starts signing to him. Mm -hmm. And he's watching her sign. He can't sign. And he's like, okay, I get it. Yeah. Like she, he, he said, "What does music mean to you? Can you, can right, you explain?" Right. She said, "I can't explain it," and and she signed it, and even we got it. Yeah, because there were no subtitles for that. There were no yeah. sub- subtitles for that moment. There are yeah. th- throughout the film, but that becomes that was just so fascinating to me because of this idea of different languages mm-hmm. and different worlds that one mm-hmm. lives in through different languages, and how they kind of demarcate. Totally. Being yeah. inside or being outside. Again, this is something that you, this is the kind of character development that you do not through exposition, but through the character doing something. She is more comfortable, even though she's a hearer, signing because all of her life she's expressed herself as a signer. Mm-hmm. And that was just a beautiful moment. I agree. Yeah. This brings us to maybe we can talk about the audition at the end. Mm-hmm. Kind of the drama picks up. Um, She has this performance. Her parents see it. So can I say something? Sure. Yeah. The entire movie, I had one question in my head, like having seen the French movie. The French, that audition scene in the French version was the only moment that I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. I can't handle this. I'm going to cry. And then I just sobbed hysterically. And it was because of the song choice. Um, It was... In the French version. In the French version, it was uh, Je Vol. And the actress sang it with so much gut and just so much intensity. And uh, the same thing happens as in Coda. So the drama really, I think, picks up when she gives a performance with Mm. her new boyfriend. Mm -hmm. You know, now they're boyfriend and girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And the parents are at the show and they can't really feel it. They can't really, you know, they're looking around at how other people are responding emotionally in the audience Mm -hmm. then you know and we're really seeing from the dad's perspective Mm -hmm. and he is kind of looking around and seeing how Mm -hmm. she's affecting people and then they get home and he says i just need a moment to be by myself but then she comes over and they have a conversation and then he says sing the song for me and he holds her her chest and her her neck so he can feel the you know her singing her vibrating Mm -hmm. we should say he loves gangster rap music because he can feel the bass (laughs) (laughs) But there's that. And then and then it just kind of ramps up from there. Mm. And there's, you know, she has an emotional scene with her brother. And I totally get the brother's perspective, too. Mm, yeah, yeah. And what everything's leading up to is she decides to, she's going to do the audition. Mm-hmm. And she goes to the audition. And she's totally unprepared because it's last minute. And then there, you know, there's these, it's at Berkeley College of Music. Mm-hmm. There's these three judges. Mm-hmm. And she's going to do, and she chooses... Both Sides Now by Joni Mitchell. By Joni Mitchell. Right. Exactly. Which is what you said is... Is cheating. It's cheating. Yeah. <laughs> and I totally agree. Yeah. yeah, it really destroyed me. I was like... And I was not prepared for that. Like, It was I, heavy. I wasn't prepared for that song today. Like, I need to be prepared to even just listen to the versions that I'm used to. Mm -hmm. But I was not prepared to hear that song in that context. That song, I've told you personally, that song has a special 
place for me mm-hmm. when I was sick and delirious in mm-hmm. the hospital for two months. I had that song playing in my head over and over and over mm-hmm. again. For some reason, it just came in my head. Yeah. And I was singing that song. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do anything else. <laughs> But I had that song singing in my head over and over and over. It's a very emotional song for mm-hmm. me. And I think any Joni Mitchell fan, you know, that's like, that just breaks you. That song breaks yeah. you. Yeah, I was not prepared for that. And so, that, so it's cheating. Like, <laughs> yeah, and you're totally right. The moment th- when I broke, mm-hmm. I, I know you know where I broke. Yeah. So she's singing the song and then she sees her parents who had kind of snuck up into the auditorium yes. and they're sitting upstairs. Her they're not family, supposed to be there. Yeah, her, her family's upstairs, her brother and her parents. And she sees them and she starts signing the lyrics, right? And I fell apart. And I think I said something and I grabbed you. Yeah. And we both started crying. I was crying way before that. Okay. Yeah, but that's that kind of like broke me. I was just like, oh my God, this is just perfect. Oh, I am getting to hear you just. You are. About I can it. see. I can see it. That, that was so. That was like one, just one of those cinematic moments. Yeah. That doesn't happen very often. Us talking about it right uh-huh. now. If you haven't seen it, it sounds kind of cheesy. But oh my god, this film is so good. I, I need yeah. to mention the the director's name is Sean Heder, and she did a movie before um, called Tallulah with Elliot Page and Allison Janney. Oh I have yeah, not yeah, seen yeah. That movie. Yeah, I've seen that movie. But. This was just a master, mm-hmm. a master work of directing. Everything deserved that incredible moment. Mm, yeah. You know, films do this all the time. They lead right. up to this this big emotional moment. Right. That one deserved right. that moment. For everything that she right. went through, for everything that the family went through, it's like, again, that's what I meant about the, the inside and the outside of these worlds of language. For her to sign the words of the song, which she did not do before, mm-hmm in that moment, made her sing the song from the world that she knows, Mm -hmm. is what I'm getting Mm -hmm. at. And that was just so, so incredibly beautiful. And uh, it sounded like the actress sung... She sang live. Right, right. She sang live. Uh, Amazing singer. I mean, I I was like, I don't know anything about her. Do you know anything about her? Well, I told you that I'm obsessed with this Netflix show called Lock and Key. It's like a fantasy show. It's kind of like the Mm -hmm. Umbrella Academy. It has the same vibes as the Umbrella Academy. Her name is Amelia Jones. Yeah, and she's in that. So I I knew I had seen her a lot before. Okay. But other than that, I have no, you know, I I don't know who she is. Yeah, she was an amazing singer. She was fantastic. Fantastic. Really good actor, too. Yeah, that was was a heavy moment. Also, the teacher, they had a piano. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in one of those kind of auditions like that? Yeah, yeah. So they have a piano player there. Yeah. You're supposed to have the sheet music ahead of time. She didn't have the sheet music. Like the sheet music for the piano player. For the piano player, yeah. right. And you had the three judges. Mm-hmm. The teacher kind of barges in and mm-hmm. says, I can I can handle this. I'll, I'll take this. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. And the judges are getting impatient. Right. But so she also gets to do it in front of the teacher. Mm-hmm. And she starts making a mistake when mm-hmm. she starts. And he makes a mistake mm-hmm. and then says, sorry, my fault. And that was just a nice little. Yeah, yeah. But everything let you had all the characters right. there, yeah, who who mattered in that room. Mm-hmm. Just bravo script mm-hmm. writing. Yeah, yeah, it definitely made up for all of the things that just didn't kind of come together, didn't tie together in the French version. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I, I was like, oh, you know, I guess it's easier to sort of ameliorate um, something that had pre-existed, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So, like, I. <laughs> Because the French version wasn't as together, like the storytelling arc was not as it was a it, it was a little sloppier than this one. But one one thing is that the song choice, like different cultures have, you know, their their poets, right? And France has their own great song singer songwriters, and the song that was chosen for that audition scene in the French version was really good too. Like I I really liked it. It was called uh, Je Vol, but it was very literal. It's like, you know, I'm not staying, I fly away. That's why it's called Je Vol, I fly. I think it, they even say, like, mother and father, I can't stay here, you know. So it's, it was very literal, and she starts signing that. And I, that was very, you know, it was very sad and whatever. But I'm sorry, France, you don't have Joni Mitchell. Well, yeah, and it's yeah. so perfect. I've looked at love from yeah. both sides now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure that's a great song and you, you know, Javol was great, but I, I just didn't anticipate both sides now. I was just, you know, anytime that that song 
is in a movie, you better use it properly, you know? And say exactly. this was one of those cases where I was like, okay, yeah, they did use it well. And there's something about that song that gets... What is it about that song? I've never been able I to... Mean, it's haunting the lyrics. It's very it, poetic. There's a lot of imagery. There's a lot of imagery. Yeah, in that song. And there's something very universal about how everyone's life, it doesn't matter who you are, has both sides to it. You could have been really happy, but you've also seen the other side. And that's just how, that's just life. It's, it's a really simple... It's a really wise song, too. It's, yeah. it's, it's a song of someone who's been through... Everything that people go through, like everyone goes through, right? Like you, there's loss and there's joy and there's, you know, you win some, you lose some. It's, it's like, but it's told in such a... It's also, there's something, and sorry to get too heavy, but mm-hmm. it's also a song that almost sounds like somebody who has transcended and is singing I totally from agree. the perspective of somewhere that not many of us have been to. Oh, I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. And she wrote that song when she was like in her early 20s. That's incredible. She's That's a weird. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> you and I listen to a lot of Joni Mitchell. Yeah. I mean, there's just no, like I said, I'm sure France has, like, mm-hmm. I'm sure a, a, every culture, you know, Korea has its singer song, but you don't have Joni Mitchell. I'm sorry. Right. Like, it's just, you know, that there's something about, yeah. And, and so when that happened, I was like, well, that makes sense, you know, because mm. I was wondering the whole time what song are they going to choose for I that was, scene? I was almost a little cynical halfway through, like, yeah. or or suspicious, I guess, thinking, oh, is this, like, going to be another one of those movies that ends up, like, Little Miss Sunshine, you know, there's the obligatory right. thing at the end, right. and then, yay, crowd pleaser, and she decides to go to Berkeley. Right, right. But I was, I was not, it was so much more... <laughs> So much heavier. Yeah. Because again, it earned it. It it earned that performance. Right. Oh, heavy. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've covered a lot of, not a lot, but like I've covered a couple of Joni Mitchell songs. Yeah, beautifully. But I don't know about both sides now. I never knew how to approach that song. I think the time, the right time will come and I'll know. But yeah, it's one of those songs that like the older you get. Yeah. Well, you know, it's <laughs> like because she had rehearsed it halfway through the film, right? I don't know if it was her choice or if it was her teacher's choice, mm-hmm. but yeah, she tried it before and she wasn't really bringing it. Right. And that's when the teacher has to mm-hmm. tell her that you, you have to really own this song. What else? Just some things about the movie. Any any other thoughts? Well, clearly the actors who played all the deaf family members are actually deaf because I was wondering mm-hmm. about that. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, that's a, a lot of signing. I wonder how the director doing. did it. Like that must I know, have right? taken a lot of patience. Yeah, I mean anything is possible. You know, people have interpreters for like you know different languages. True. Say, you yeah, know, yeah. and this is the interpretation is like much more simultaneous when it mm-hmm. comes to sign language than like other um, languages. Mm-hmm. And their performances were amazing. Um, I guess you knew the the actress who played the mother, Marley Matlin. Yeah. I guess you would say she's a famous. Actress. She's been in a lot of big movies like mm-hmm. from the eighties and. 90s mm-hmm. but she gets a lot of roles as yeah, yeah, when a I've deaf person her. Yeah, is of needed course. yeah 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 children of a lesser god she won mm, the yeah, academy yeah. award okay she was also in the west wing oh okay yeah um and there was a there was a scene where the brother gets frustrated with the whole situation and has this heartfelt kind of fight with um the sister mm-hmm. right and he said we're not stop making us look stupid we're not stupid you know we got this like i got this i'm the older brother and he said like they should learn how to live with deaf people. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? He's totally right. Why are we not educated at school? Like, you know, basic sign language. Well, but if you, because parents are going to say, why are we wasting time learning sign language? No, That's because exactly I, why. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, I, though, I get like, your there point. are so many things that we learn in school that are entirely useless. You know, I've thought about this. I, yeah. Wouldn't it be great if everybody learned sign language? Like, why mm-hmm. not? Well, I I know that in certain European countries, they do learn sign language in in primary school. You know, and you don't have to be like super good at it, but like, you know, at least know, because that it's one thing to choose to live a certain way, but then it's another thing to like, they are unable to speak, but we can sign. 
That's true. Yeah, I so sometimes like, feel that way in Korea when there's people with multiple languages. It's like, why are you talking in Korean? I know you speak English, but that's a different story. Yeah, that's an entirely but, different but story. But still, um, I, I agree with you. Like, I mean, it's a universal language, too. Yeah, it's like they, well, no, every language has oh, that's right. So, so we're going to talk about other yeah. movies, but there's another, I saw a movie, um, Drive My Car, and, mm-hmm. and the character says she's going to do Korean sign language. Yeah. And I'm like, Korean sign language? Yeah, because the sentence structures are totally different. Oh, yeah. And like, you have no idea how different Korean is from English because your brain... Yes, I do. No, but your brain doesn't have to do it, the switcheroo, every single day. That's why I can't speak it yeah. because it's a puzzle. Mm, it's, it's, it's I have to complete, reorder yeah. the words all around when I try to speak a sentence. Yeah. So in order f- to sign, it has to match the language yeah okay okay yeah uh i liked one of the things i liked about the movie is they didn't mask the silent moments Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of moments when they're signing and they just Mm -hmm. let the dialogue play out as if it's a dialogue scene so they didn't cheapen it for you know attention deficit (laughs) type of audience they really let the the dialogue Uh do its thing no music Mm -hmm. just so you could hear natural sound you could hear their body move you could hear them breathing i really appreciate i really appreciated that too it was nice it was very intimate so, Cece, there's yeah. one thing that I thought about you while watching this movie. She has to translate everything for the right. for the family. Obviously, we mentioned that. But you have to translate for me sometimes, mm-hmm. and you hate it. I do, yeah. Why I'm do you sorry. hate it? For me, it's like, and and this is addressed in the movie when she's kind of like, she gets really annoyed at her dad because he starts fighting with her when she's the messenger of a situation. What happens inevitably when you translate is that a lot of people tend to shoot the messenger. And it's okay if you just shoot the messenger and that's over and it's it's done for, right? Like the messenger is dead. That's fine. But what they end up doing is they end up like abusing the messenger. Like let's say I was translating for you. And well, we've had this situation. Yeah, and what you're hearing from my mouth is entirely unfair and ridiculous. Then you start kind of fighting with me like and I know you're not saying these things to me at me but I'm the one who is feeling this energy this anger all this volatile energy and it's something that has nothing to do with me and I would do this for you but you're about the only person that I would do this for it's not only that though yeah. you you also get it from the person who you're totally who you're talking to in Korean yeah. and they're trying to tell you everything expecting yeah. you to tell me and a lot like of people, sales pitches yeah. in department stores <laughs> also a lot of people who have never been in this situation are they just get so entitled when they have you as a translator and they all of a sudden you are a house elf and you never right. they're not paying you you never asked to be in this situation but all of a sudden you are a complete machine or a slave or something and the best people do this like it's not even like bad people do this it's the best people they just don't you know because it doesn't occur to them and this could inevitably this would inevitably happen in a family obviously because i would absolutely translate for my family i don't usually have to my parents speak perfect english but it would drive me crazy if we were together and my parents didn't speak English and I had to translate every single thing that you say to them and they say to you. Like, oh, I yeah, would not would want be, to go home. Yeah. yeah. Good for us that your parents speak yeah. English. And they speak English to me when, when right. I'm there, which is very nice of them. Right, right. But she says at some point, it's exhausting, right? It's really... And I was thinking the whole time, that is a lot. I thought of you when she said that. Yeah, that is a lot to be put on one person, on a teenager. But then they had no other choice. So it was it was really heartbreaking. That was like a real conflict, right? Yeah, that was part of the, the yeah. kind of buildup of the weight that she had mm-hmm. to carry. Yeah. And I liked how she didn't overplay it. She didn't... Yeah. Like, there was no... If this... Oh my God, if this is a Korean movie, mm, yeah. there would be a couple of crying scenes. Right. <laughs> But like not just kind of crying, but a, like a breakdown. Yeah, in the rain. Uh huh. Outside. Should we stop there? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's stop there. Let's take a break, and mm-hmm. we're going to come back, and we're going to do the second half of our show. Okay. Which is talking about Oscars. All right. And the films that we've seen, that I've mm-hmm. seen, and this won't be about music mm-hmm. necessarily, but we'll just discuss the Oscars. Okay. And yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> 